going to read a psalm today together if you have your bibles open it up to psalm 91 Psalm 91 Let's read together He who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will say to the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him I will trust Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler from the perilous pestilence He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample under foot because he has set his love upon me therefore i will deliver him i will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will deliver him and honor him With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is a psalm that is called a psalm of protection. If you just uh, take that whole psalm it talks about your protection, how God protects you. How God protects not only you but your family, your health, your finances and everything that you possess. This is a psalm of protection and there are times when you just are a little afraid about what is happening around you I encourage you to take this psalm and read it out loud Sometimes people are afraid of the enemy oh what does the enemy has for me today oh, the enemy is putting so many things in my life you know even if I want to live a peaceful life there is so much work of the enemy that that I am seeing And then there are some people are saying there is somebody that's getting sick in my house all the time I mean my dad got sick and then my mom got sick and now my children are sick and we are going to the doctor after doctor and the upon appointments are there every single week and there's so much time that goes waste you know if that's you then you read that psalm you know god led me to read this psalm god led me to uh prepare this message about psalm 91 even though this is a very popular psalm many of us would have learnt by heart when you were little yet there are seven things that we are going to learn today the title of my message is how do you protect your house how do you protect your house The Bible says that a wise woman will build that house. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1 talks about how a wise woman. Not every woman can build a house. The wise woman builds her house. It takes wisdom on wisdom a house is built. How do you get wisdom? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What is fear of God when you obey his commandments? That is what it means when you say that you are walking in the fear of God. 
so it all starts with the word of god that's why you take your time to put the word of god in your life read your word memorize your, those words put your put those words in your walls put the word in your system as much as you can that is where we start how do you build your house if i ask you everyone will be living in a house you may be living with your parents you may be living with your children but you are living in a house whatever house wherever you are living some may live in a bigger house some may live in a very small house we are not talking about the size of the house we are talking about how do you build that house how do you build your house on the spiritual side in the area of protection how do you build that house that's what we are going to talk about today how many are excited to hear about how do you build your house we all want to build our house but on the contrary the bible goes on to say in that same verse proverbs 14 and uh, verse 1b but the foolish pulls it down with her hands it's a foolish woman that just pulls it down with her hands so it's so important that as women we become home builders kingdom builders we are builders we are builders say i am a builder say like you mean it i am a builder one more time i am a builder yes we are called to build we are not to living uh, to we are not just living to live off of something that's already built no that is not who we are we are the ones who are going to build that house so god has given us a work to do we have work cut out for us that we need to build our house here in the scripture you see in psalm 91 he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty there are some secrets to be in that secret place you and i need to learn how to live under the shadow of the almighty so we are going to learn some keys to safeguard your house in that the first key is you need to know how to create a spiritual atmosphere create a spiritual atmosphere say it with me create a spiritual atmosphere you know this is something that you have to create when god looked at the darkness in genesis chapter 1 he looked at the darkness and he said let there be light when he said let there be light you know there was an influence in that surrounding that light came in the light came when there was darkness so as god's people you know god wants us to create a spiritual atmosphere and to create that atmosphere you need to first learn to dwell even though your house is the dwelling place you have to have a dwelling place on the spiritual side to live in that presence of god you need to make god your dwelling place whatever you are doing you may be cleaning you may be doing the laundry you may be cooking you may be driving as god's people the key number one is you need to create that spiritual atmosphere atmosphere means the the influence that's around you the surroundings you know you create that atmosphere you create that climate that's the first thing you need to learn to do create that peaceful atmosphere you know when we got married my husband asked me what is your first expectation in a marriage you know we we he asks so many questions you all know you know he he comes from the western part of india i come from the southern part of india so there are so many things we have to talk about so he asked me what do you expect in a house what do you expect in that in this marriage 
I still remember what I answered in the year 1997. Yeah, I would just encourage you to just put, keep him at the back of the, of, the, of the room. So that would be a good place. Thank you. Yeah. So he asked me, what is your expectation in this marriage, in this house? I remember what I said. I said that the number one expectation in a marriage is peace for me. I want a peaceful marriage. Whatever we have, whatever we don't have, doesn't really matter to me. Even today, I say the same thing. I want this house to be a peaceful habitation. What do you want in your house? What do you want in your house? I don't know about you. But you can create that atmosphere. And that is why you need the wisdom of God. A wisdom, the wisdom given from God. Wisdom given from God. You know, when we have that wisdom, you and I will have the grace to influence our atmosphere. And there was a time, Pastor Tyrone, who have gone on to be with the Lord, would drive from his work on the days when we have our weekly lighthouse gathering in our home. This would be on a Wednesday at 7 o'clock. But Pastor Tyrone will come in at around 5.30. He gets up from work at 5. And he comes there and he just takes his Bible and sits down. He would ask Pastor Tyrone, you are an hour and a half early. He would say, you know, there is a peace in this house. I can feel the presence of God. And the kids would be running here and there. You know, Joshua will be in diapers. I'm talking about the year 2000. Six, he was just a year old at that time. I mean, I'll be, you know, just running behind them, getting the work done, getting the vacuum cleaner going and just making sure the lighthouse happens at seven on Wednesdays. My husband was teaching at that time in Bethany University and he'll be driving down from Santa Cruz, you know. And, um, you know, pastor would say, Pastor Tyrone would say, you know, I see that peace. You know, I'm here to tell you, whatever you desire, God will give you the desire of your heart. What is important for you? You know, he would say that there is a peace in this place. I see that peace in this place. Make a spiritual atmosphere. It is not the peace that we can bring. When we really desire that and ask God to give that peace, God will get in that equation and God will give that peace in that house. You know, you can create a very joyful atmosphere in your house. You know, you can be those carriers of joy, carriers of love, carriers of God's presence. You know, you can carry so many spiritual things, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace and all these things. You can carry that and you can give to others what you have. You can share that love. You can share that joy. You can share that peace. The first point is you make a spiritual atmosphere. You make that spiritual atmosphere. You create that spiritual atmosphere. That is the first thing that you and I need to build your house and to protect your house. The spiritual atmosphere is, is what your whole life will hang on. This is a foundational principle. Doesn't matter how much you are qualified. Doesn't matter where you work. Doesn't matter how much you are worth. You know, God wants you and I to create that spiritual atmosphere. And the second verse, turn with me again to Psalm 91. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. 
the second key to living a safeguarding your home protecting your home building your home is to protect protect that atmosphere first you said you need to create that atmosphere and then second is you need to protect that atmosphere you need to be the one that is protecting like a mother hen if you see a mother hen when that enemy comes when that eagle comes do you know what that mother hen does it just makes a very quick sound when it sees that eagle the little ones are not seeing that eagle the mother makes that little noise and it spreads its wings all the little chicks they come inside and then you know and that mother protects that little ones here it's your responsibility to protect that atmosphere making sure the worldly influence does not come into your house not into my house you know we cannot live a compromising lifestyle and still expect that protection you know god has put a fence of protection around you god says in his word that you are a watered well watered garden and you are a garden that is enclosed god not only waters you but god has enclosed this garden he has put an enclosure around you that's a good news he has put us in a place and he has enclosed this garden but it will become your responsibility and my responsibility to keep that protection on we need to make sure like how you make sure the doors are locked before you go to bed how many sisters do you do that before you go to bed make sure that front door is open i mean closed sorry make sure if there's another door that goes to patio make sure that one is open and if there's something the another door that goes into the garage make sure that one is closed everything is closed now and you go and sleep peacefully many of us do that right yeah am i the only one that does that or you all do that yes we all do that we make sure that house is all locked in the same way on the spiritual side we need to make sure we put that protection god is my refuge and my fortress god becomes your refuge god becomes your fortress fortress comes from the word fort fort is what you have when you go to the city of trichy there is called a fort there is a fort that they built that it just it's like a wall like a firewall in computer in computer field you see there's a firewall and you know there is no interference you know it's a protection here god wants you and i to make sure you protect that atmosphere you cannot encourage worldly influence to come into our life the bible says that even though you are in this world you are not of this world you are not of this world whatever goes in the world cannot come into our house not in our house sorry that's what you need to say you know there are some television shows you cannot turn on those channels what about if your other friend watches it you make sure that you don't allow those things through media through music through worldly friends you know you have to be the salt you have to be the light you have to be the influence to them and not otherwise that is how you protect that atmosphere you have rules set for yourself not in my house we will not do this we will not celebrate this holiday or we will not dress up like this we will not do this we will not do that there are there should be do's and don'ts how you, that is how you protect that atmosphere you not only create that atmosphere you protect that atmosphere 
and then the third key is that you need to resist the wrong spirits say resist the wrong spirits resist the wrong spirits you know you and i need to understand that we are living in a in a world where there is a, so many wrong spirits there they are called unclean spirits they are called the wicked spirits they are called evil spirits and so many other things that you can call they are called the the wrong spirits say it with me wrong spirits you know how will i explain the spiritual aspect of this message let's say there is a attribute called anger you know anger can come in two ways one anger in the flesh if somebody is irritating you you get angry right you get angry at the at, at your children sometimes you tell them once and they tell them the second time the third time they do the same thing we get angry so that is a natural instinct to get angry if somebody is annoying and then there is a spirit of anger when that spirit of anger comes you know they are angry all the time i mean there you don't have to trigger that anger if they are just angry they are mad they are mad at somebody they are mad at their boss they are mad at their family members even in the road they are have the, the road rage and they are honking you know that's the spirit of anger you know we need to pray that god will give us the spirit of discerning of spirits as home builders as builders of home we need to pray for something that is to have the discernment even if it is your own children you know don't you think that because they are your children you know they are going to be all nice no they can open a door to the enemy and the enemy can influence them them and because of that influence they may say something do something you know their behavioral things may depend on that so we need to resist the wrong spirit you know god's word says in psalm 119 and verse 37 to turn your eyes from worthless things say worthless things worthless things the, the worthless things means the worldly things they are not having a spiritual worth they are not valuable on the spiritual side god's word very clearly says let's turn to that verse and let's read that you are going to have one full hour of word of god teaching of the word and i just enjoy teaching the word because i am learning now turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way that can be a very good prayer psalm 119 and verse 37 turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your ways and revive me in your ways there are two things one is we need to do our part we need to turn away my eyes do not look at it the second time If you have looked at something and you don't feel good about it then turn it off that's it no say just no no tolerance i i have zero tolerance for sin and then the psalm says and revive me in your ways so we need to turn away from those worthless things turn away turn away turn away from those worthless things and now god's word very clearly says that we need to resist the enemy we need to resist the enemy james 4 and verse 7 says submit to god and resist the devil say it with me submit to god and resist the devil we you need to learn how to resist the devil you know there are many times we believe us try to accommodate things thinking that hey this is this culture on the name of this culture we try to accommodate things and that sounds logical that sounds very nice but it takes a lot of time and energy and money to get the true deliverance and you finally feel that it is not worth the pain it's so easy to allow the demonic things the worldly things into our house very easy these days it's not at all difficult you know with the wifi with that internet you know you can just click off a button you can open the flood gates for the demons to come in 
but make sure you don't open that eye gate to those things make sure you don't open that ear gate to those things make sure you don't open your heart to that junk it is not worth your time it is not worth that pain so god is saying that you need to learn to resist the wrong spirit say it one more time resist the wrong spirit i will resist the wrong spirits period we are going to resist the wrong spirits that is why in psalm 91 we read so many times psalmist is saying deliver me deliver me deliver me that keeps repeating itself in psalm 91 verses 14 and 15 here we see that God, because he has set his love upon me i will deliver him again he is saying i will be with him in trouble in verse 15 b i will deliver him and honor him deliver him deliver him why is god saying that because our god is in the business of deliverance i'm telling you when you know the truth the truth will set you free there are so many bondages that has been put upon us whether we know it or not you know words that are binding you know some people will say something like that you know our family has never made anything big you know in our family everybody is diabetic some people will say you know what we never had enough when we were growing up all these words these are words which will put a bondage because words are seeds like we learned last month you know don't just say it out even though you see that you say my god shall supply all my needs i am the child of the living god i will not lack any good thing or oh, that is how you need to say i mean you need to say words that is going to just put things in motion in a biblical way you need to say oh if even though if everybody is diabetic you know i am going to be healthy because my god is my healer he is my physician you know he has said that he will not put any sickness on me you know i am going to be healed under his wings i have my healing by his stripes i am healed that's what you say you know we need to resist the wrong spirit now you say spirit of infirmity i command you to leave leave my family leave my children you have no right to touch my kids or my my body i am healed in the name of jesus i am healed in the name of jesus and then there are some people who will say you know what the in my family one sister told me my family is accident prone really you don't say that what do you mean you say you are you are accident prone that means everybody gets into accidents all the time and you wonder why accidents are happening accidents are not for me say it that way you know nobody will hit my car not my car not my car my car will be safe because god i am dwelling under the shadow of the almighty i am protected i am covered when you say that when you say that you come under that protection of god when god has said so many times time and again i will deliver you i will keep you i will be with you i will not forsake you there are so many things god is saying i will and i will and i will why take the trouble of saying something else god is saying i will deliver you i will deliver you i will deliver you and i will honor you god wants to honor you doesn't matter where you are doesn't matter which family you come from doesn't matter who your parents are doesn't matter what your background is here god is saying that we can live under that protection and be under psalm 91 you know you, when you don't know how to pray just say i pray psalm 91 over my life I pray Psalm 91 over my family. I pray Psalm 91 over my finances. I pray Psalm 91 over my life. That is how you have the protection of God. And we need to be very quick to find out if there is an enemy at work. we need to be very quick to discern so we need to ask god god give me that discernment these days i find myself praying that lord help me to discern you know what kind of spirit that is 
because man can only look at the face man can only listen to the words but only god knows the intentions unless god will reveal to us we may not know the integrity of people we just believe whatever they say and if they they don't do it then we are so disappointed disappointed so god, we want god to show us the spiritual state of people so that we can pray meaningfully many things that you see on the natural side may not have natural answers you know many of the mental sickness has demonic you know reasons for it many kinds of epilepsy does not have a physical cure they are demonic you know there was an epileptic in the scripture and this boy was pushed into water pushed into fire and things that were happening that was so uh, bad in his life but jesus was able to discern that there was a spirit that was behind all that so how do you protect your house how do you protect your house when you discern when you discern there is a spiritual activity you know whether to allow it or to block it if it is from god you say god i pray that you will continue to work you will continue to work with the spirit of the living god continue to work and if you see there is a work of the enemy you know in many of the kids uh, you know if you have a child in your house there are many kinds of rebellion and stubbornness that comes straight from the enemy you know there's a spirit of stubbornness they would just not obey you know they will just want to rebel they just want to just be very adamant in their things if they want something they will cry they will whine they will pout and they will get it from you many times there will be a spirit of disobedience you bind that spirit of disobedience bind that spirit of rebellion bind that spirit of dishonoring others you know when you start binding those spirits you will see that change in behavior even in your own families believe me you know there are spirits you know that influence they catch it along the way they go to school and somebody is watching something and they just get in that and they watch there they open a door for the enemy and then that enemy has a legal right to influence them and they come home with all those things so as a praying woman in that house you need to resist that enemy you need to shake it off in the name of jesus like how paul a mighty man of god but there was a time he got a viper in his hand so you are not as long as you will live in this world you know you are in this world so there are so many things evil things out there so when you notice that there is some kind of influence that is not right then you need to shake it off say shake it off shake it off in the name of jesus shake it off you know any kind of wrong influence that has come into your house you should be able to discern and don't try to win that um war with your words many times as women we try to win an argument no you don't you just can't you need to know how to bind those spirits behind that action when you start binding and binding and what on one side you need to bind the wrong spirits on the side you need to lose the right spirit that's why jesus in matthew 18 and verse 18 and 19 jesus is saying that whatever you bind on earth will be bound and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed so you need to do both binding and loosing say it with me binding and loosing that is how you protect your house that is key number 3 to resist the wrong spirits let's get into the f- fourth key key number 4 are you learning something yes yes the fourth key to protect your house is anoint your home with oil it's so important to take the anointing oil and just apply it in the house whenever you feel like it sometimes every month every week or even when you send your kids to school anoint them with oil take the oil in your hand and be ready if they when they are ready to leave just anoint them and just lay your hands on them and send them you know it's so important that you release that anointing because god's word says 
that the anointing will break the yoke the anointing oil will break the yoke what is yoke yoke is something that is keeping the other one together you know there are two oxen and there's a yoke sometimes the bondages are like that and when you release the anointing when you release the anointing you know something breaks something literally breaks the yoke is not bent or anything if the yoke is broken that is because of that anointing you know anointing is a very powerful word you know we call this as a monthly anointing meeting why we want the yoke to be broken we want all the enemies yoke you know some comes through the blood line some kind of yoke you have got it along the way when you are living in a culture that so ungodly over the period of years there's a yoke that comes and in isaiah 10 and verse 24 you see that the anointing will break the yoke anointing will break the yoke so that is why we want to anoint your house with oil oil represents the power of the holy ghost and oil is a symbol of faith in god's ability to bring you that victory god's ability when you just doing that action of faith it's an act of faith when you take that oil and you apply on somebody that is an act of faith what you are saying is god i believe in your ability to bring that liberty and freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty so it is so important that you anoint your home with oil you know as god's people when we go and dedicate a home last uh, month i were god led me to go to a dear sister who comes to the king's bride and she really uh, god god gave her a house and god led me to go and anoint that house you know i don't go to the all the people who buy homes and say hey i want to go and anoint your home no but it, to this sister god led me to take the oil and go so i called her and said you know i want to come to your house when are you moving she said akka i am moving in a couple of days i said i'll be there just let me know and i took that oil and went there you know what she said you know there is one room in this house and there whenever i go there's this restlessness that comes to me i could see something i i could feel something in that room and she said that my daughter is going to be in that room so that room has something in going on i don't know what it is but i'm feeling very uncomfortable every time i go to that room no wonder god god led me to go to that house and i anointed every door every lintel and prayed and said i anoint this room with oil in the name of jesus every yoke be broken every burden be removed whatever happened in this room will not have any more impact i we drive out all the demonic influence in the name of jesus by the power of the holy ghost we pray that your presence will come so that's what we prayed so you need to you need to pray over your home if there is somebody that is living in rebellion let's say for example you after they go to work you take that oil and on their pillow on their clothes on on their dress on their belongings you lay your hands with oil believing that god will release that anointing to set that person free maybe he was addicted to something you know you can release that anointing and break that addiction in the name of jesus because god has given you that authority he said i give you the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions luke chapter 10 and verse 19 says nothing shall by any means hurt you shall we read that verse luke chapter 10 and verse 19 we are going to read it together Here Jesus says 
I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And let's read together. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that is you and you and the ones that are watching by internet. Whoever that is, if you are a child of God, if you are born again, then that verse is yours. God has given you that authority. What are you looking for? You take that authority in the name of Jesus. You can anoint the things and release the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, Paul's handkerchief carried that anointing. He had the handkerchiefs. And that handkerchief was laid on people and those people were not only healed, they were delivered. They were delivered. Think about that. So, who was Paul? Who was a, he was a man of God. He was a child of God. You know, Paul carried that kind of anointing. We read about that in Acts chapter 19. Turn with me to Acts chapter 19. Verse number 12. Acts 19 and verse 12. 11 and 12. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them. And what happened? Not only the diseases left and the evil spirits went out of them. Do you see that? So do you think your hand can carry that anointing? Well, some of you are smiling. Maybe you don't think so. But I think so. You know, say my hands are anointed. Come on, go ahead. My hands are anointed. My hands are anointed. My hands are anointed. You know, that's why when we lay hands on some people, they receive the Holy Spirit baptism. Yeah? Why? Because when God anoints us, we become those powerhouses. You know, that power starts just going through our hands. When we ha lay hands on the sick, they recover. When we lay hands on the, on the people, you know, even the handkerchiefs of Paul carried the anointing that could deliver the people. You know, we want God's people to have that kind of power. That's why we have the anointing meeting for women. We don't want a powerless church. This world outside need to see the power that is in you. You know, you're in your workplace, they should know that, hey, if we call this sister, you know, she can bring her little handkerchiefs and even if she walks in, that, that sickness will be gone. Nothing in this handkerchief, but who is carrying it makes the difference. If you want to be anointed, it depends on how much you live pure before God, number one. Number two, how much you are thirsty. I think the, these are the two things that are necessary for you to carry that anointing. God has to trust you with that anointing. For that you need to live a holy life before God. You know we trust God. But can God trust you? Can God trust us? Are we trustworthy? Second is that if we are thirsting for that. If you really want this anointing. You know you can have it. Because freely you have received. And he says freely give. You have not paid for it. Freely you have received. See here you see that you can anoint and pray. You can anoint. You can anoint. You can anoint. In the, in the Old Testament they anointed the tabernacle. Everything was so. They were, even the things were anointed. It's a key to have that protection is to anoint your home. And the fifth key is we need to draw a bloodline. Say bloodline. 
we need to draw that blood line what is drawing a blood line means very recently i learned this god says in his word in zachariah that i will be a wall of fire around you he says i am going to be a wall of fire around you just think about it if god is going to be a wall of fire around you can the enemy come in cross that fire no but then what can you do you know mighty man of god said you can draw a blood line and i just read this illustration out of the internet yesterday that there was this couple that were doing a mighty work for god and they were you know casting the demons out of people you know they they lived in a place where there was a lot of demonic influences and so this this husband and wife team will fast they will pray and just uh, you know um, deliver the people out of those bondages and lead them to christ when they were doing that over the period of years the enemy was so furious and he started you know influencing the bad people and what did they do they started injecting rabies into those dogs and then these dogs were just let loose around their home and this couple had a lot of kids you know the kids normally play outside in the yard and these dogs you know they were just like stray dogs i mean they were not trained ones and so when the dog bites what happens this rabies will come and they that disease will make the children bark like dogs and they die eventually so that was the work of the enemy so the enemy planned this you know against this man of god and the woman of god you know you have to really pray for your pastors you know you need to pray for uh, pastor terry you know we you need to pray for your pastor you know there whoever god has given you pray for me you know you know we need to really pray for protection we we are living in the last days and we want god to protect the servants of god you know why because the laborers are few not many laborers are there very few laborers are there and they need to be protected they need to be preserved they need to be happy their needs to be met so that they can continue to do the work of god do you get me so we need to pray having said that what happened was this dogs the stray dogs were let loose and this pastor and his wife they saw hey wow, what is this there are so many dogs that have come in our neighborhood and they are just just wandering here and there and they immediately knew in their heart that this is the work of the enemy there is this dogs are not the regular dogs there is some bad motive behind that and they started drawing that blood line say blood line they said that we draw a blood line around our house they started praying like that the pastor and his wife they held hands together and they said we draw a blood line around the house we draw a blood line around the house we draw that blood line around the house when they started praying the mighty anointing of the holy spirit just came upon them in such a powerful way and couple of days from that time when god talked to them about that carol they saw so many dogs dead in a circle around their house the dogs will run and when they hit that point they fall down dead when those dogs would run when they hit that point they drop dead and the other dog comes and the other dog comes and there was this boundary and this is a documented version okay and they saw this whole circle of dead dogs people god listens to those sincere prayers you know that's when i i i learned it very recently to draw a blood line around our house the enemy cannot come cannot cross that line like how the barbed wires you know the moment somebody touches is they are they are dead meat like that you can put that blood line around your house that can be around your finances that can be around your family that can be around your kids that can be around your your work situation you know 
Jesus said, unless it is given from, from me from heaven, you have no authority over me. That's what our Lord Jesus said. So draw that blood line around you, your properties, your vehicles, your workplace, your school, whatever it is, you can draw that blood line. Hallelujah. The sixth um, key is, pray that God will commission the angels. Say, commission the angels. This is an area of service that is not much tapped into. You know, God's people never pray that prayer. At least I haven't prayed as much. I don't know about you. You know, how many times we have prayed that God commission your angels, dispatch your angels like a, like a, 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 a man of authority. You know, they, they will always, when they say something, then, you know, the, the, the soldiers are commissioned. See, so God is saying that God will command his angels to watch over you. You cannot talk directly to angels, but you can ask God to command the angels. That's what the Bible says. Uh, turn with me to Psalm um, 91. Here you read that God will command his angels. God will command his angels to watch over you. God is going to command his angels. Verse 11, Psalm 91 verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over you. Who will give the angels charge? Who is talking to the angels here? God. So that's this point I want to make it very clear. You don't talk to your angels. You talk to God. And he will give charge over you to his angels to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up. So ask God to give order to his angels. Angels operate under the authority of Jesus. If you turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 22. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 22. You know. Who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. Angels are subject to God. They just do at his command. If God is the commander and the angels are the doers. Are you listening? God is the commander and the angels are doers. And we are the ones who are receiving that help. You know, you see angels strengthening Jesus even when he needed that strength after his 40 days of fasting. You can ask that strength, especially when you're fasting. You can ask God, send that angelic help for my strength. And God will strengthen you. And the final key is speaking the word of the living God. Speaking the word of the living God. Psalm 91 and 4, it says, His truth shall be your shield. Think about that. His truth is the word of God. His truth shall be your shield. You know the soldiers have of God's word is God's word is both an offensive and a defensive weapon. Many say that God's word is an offensive weapon. It's the only weapon in the whole spiritual warfare armor for offense. But here God's word says his truth shall be your shield. His 
truth will protect you we are talking about protection and deliverance here his truth will protect you so put the word as much as possible in your life in your home in your children's life in your family's life in your finances you know when you put the word of god you know that will become a shield it will become a weapon and god's word says hebrews 4 and 12 that god's word is a double edged sword it is both ways God's word can be a shield it can be a sword we said and the sword itself is double edged see so it's all directional now so God's word is so inevitable we need to read the word we need to put the word we need to speak the word when we speak that word the word of God is going to protect that the promises of God is going to protect you You know God's word is going to just become a shield you know whatever the enemy would throw at you if you have the word of God you know like Jesus the enemy came with so many things he came with the lust of eyes he came with the lust of flesh he came with the pride of life Jesus always answered it with the word of God when you and I know the word of God when we know that truth that truth will set us free you know the truth will set us free god has given us such an angelic protection protection in the word protection through the blood of jesus you know god has given us so much protection in conclusion we are going to just meditate on one incident that happened in the old testament and what one angel of god was able to do one angel of god was able to kill 185000 people one angel that is how powerful people powerful creatures the angels are so you need to tap into that help you know many times that something that is so dormant you haven't asked for that help at all why waste that heaven you have that kind of a, of help that's available to you you ask god to commission those angels god give those angels charge over me god when you say that god will command his angels god will commission and dispatch those angels and they will start working on your behalf and believe me they are strong they are really strong can we read that in conclusion we are almost done second kings chapter 18 verses 13 to 16 and in the 14th year of king hezekiah senakerib king of assyria came up against all the fortified cities of judah and took them then hezekiah king of judah sent to the king of assyria at latchish saying i have done wrong turn away from me whatever you impose on me i will pay and the king of assyria assessed hezekiah king of juda 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold so hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the lord and in the treasuries of the king's house at that time hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the lord and from the pillars of hezekiah king of juda and overlaid to give it to the king of assyria then listen carefully king of assyria sent the tartan the rapsaris and the all the other things and here when we look at the the the, the scripture you read that entire chapter you see that that angel of god was dispatched the angel of god was dispatched and i'm missing that verse here one angel one angel was able to kill 185000 people that is how much these angels are capable of doing when you see so many bad things that have happened to god's people you know god sends his angel god sends his angel and we when we look into that scripture portion you read that 
one angel was able to kill so many people that's how powerful they were god would help you protect your house you can build your house and we saw about the keys to build that house and protect your home now we are going to stand up